Hey, so in this tutorial, we're going to write shaders to make our square a bit more interesting. For now, I'm only going to talk about two types of shaders, vertex and fragment shaders. Vertex shaders are little programs that run on the GPU for each index of our scene, and that output a vertex position and some other data based on the data of the attributes at that index. So we could, for example, take the vertex position attribute data at the index our vertex shader is running on and output that straight away, or we could translate it and rotate it before outputting it. We'll see a bit more how this can be useful to us next episode. These output position values are then interpolated to each pixel on screen. The fragment shader runs on each one of these pixels, or fragments, computes a color based on the interpolated values it receives, those values outputted by the vertex shader, and finally outputs that to the screen. Let me show you a concrete example. Let's say I have this list of vertex positions, this list of colors, and this list of indices. For each index, my vertex shader will take the corresponding position and maybe move it around. Then it will output that transformed vertex position and vertex color, which will then be interpolated between them for each fragment. Finally, it will output that interpolated color as our fragment output color. Okay, so let's implement all of this. I'm going to start by creating a new file called shader.py, which will handle our shaders nicely for us. Inside that I'm import the stuff we're going to need, create a new shader exception for later, and start writing a create shader function. The target argument will be the shader we're creating, and the source path argument is a path to the source code of the shader we want to create. First we have to read the file, again I'm not going to go into too much detail on how the syntax works, and next we need to compile our shader, and then we can handle any potential errors and raise a shader error if there are any. Now we can create our shader class. The init function takes the paths of our two shaders, and creates a shader program, which is the thing that contains both of our shaders. It then creates our vertex shader and attaches it to our program, ditto for the fragment shader, and then finally links the program and deletes our shaders. Don't forget to delete the program when the shader object gets deleted, and we also need to create a use function to be able to use our shader program. Now we can create our vertex and fragment shader source files. In the vertex shader, we can define the first attribute as vertex position. The zero here is the same zero as over here, so if you wanted to pass more attributes, such as color data if you wanted to recreate the previous example, you could just create another VBO of the number one instead. We can also create a variable to be interpolated and output to the fragment shader over here for later. Finally, we can set the final position of our vertex and move on to the fragment shader. First, we define the final output color as the fragment color, and then we take the interpolated vertex position from the vertex shader. Finally, we can set the final output color to this value computed from the interpolated vertex position. In our main source file, we just need to import our shader file, create our shader, and use it, and yeah, it looks like it works. You can read more about how the syntax for shaders work online, but most of it should be pretty familiar if you're used to other programming languages. I encourage you to play around with these shaders and see what kinds of patterns you can create with them. So see you next time. Bye.